Welcome back. Thanks for being here. In our last video, we made the mortises for our rolling sliding bypass doors using a hollow chisel mortising machine. Now what we need to do is we need to shave a little bit off of these tenons where we have these saw marks left and custom fit each tenon to its respective mortise. And I'm going to show you three different ways to do that. So let's get started. I had to set this project aside for a few days just to take care of a couple of other projects I've been working on. So when I did, I clamped the styles together just to make sure there was no movement in the wood. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these apart, take the clamps off, and I'm going to get things laid out, and the first thing that I want to do is I want to make absolutely certain that I've got everything marked exactly right. All right, so everything is marked and laid out still. The chalk marks have not worn off. So the first thing we want to do is start smoothing this tenon to fit into this mortise. This happens to be the top of the left hand door and the first method you might consider is using a shoulder plane. Now this is a Lee Nielsen medium sized shoulder plane, just a real joy to use, especially when it's sharp and it will just go right along and shave those little saw marks right off. The advantage to this is that on a shoulder plane the blade can be set so that it is level with the edge of the plane, meaning that when you take a stroke here, you'll get right up to the shoulder of the tenon. The disadvantage is, is that you've got to be kind of careful because this is not the full width of the tenon, and you're going to have to make equal numbers of strokes so that your tenon width stays the same, but it works great. Another method of doing it is with this, which is called a skew block plane. Obviously it's skewed and it's a block plane. And you'll notice here it's open on the side so you can set the blade flush with this edge and also get right up to the tenon shoulder. And this is a real cool way to do it because you basically, at least on this tenon, get the full width of the tenon in each stroke. Now I'm not getting curls because I'm going cross grain and because we have those uh, saw blade marks I'm getting more like little chips out of there. Well there's some curls because it's starting to get pretty smooth. But this is a good way to do it as well. The third way is using this and this is what's called a bed float. This happens to be a 1 8 inch bed float. This also is from Lee Nielsen and it is really a lot of fun to use. You just push, this one happens to be a push, you can get them in a pull configuration as well, and you just push along and the thing just shaves off wood. Just, it's really very cool. And it leaves a very, very smooth, almost like a sanded surface. Now, this is not as wide as the tenon, but you can make your first stroke up next to the shoulder and then kind of sweep your second stroke off the end of the tenon, and you can keep the tenon width the same the whole length. And this is a really good way to do this as well. And once you start to get it smooth and get those saw marks off there, you want to start fitting it and making sure you get a nice tight fit. And this is just about there, still just a little bit tight. So we'll just work on this just a few minutes more with this bed float. By the way, a bed float is made 
for adjusting and fitting the bed of a wooden plane when you're building planes. But I find it useful for a whole lot of other things as well. Oh yeah, that's nice. And the surface again, is it's just like it's been sanded with uh, 120 grit sandpaper. Really, really nice surface it leaves behind. So that's the way I'm going to fit these in. I'm going to use a combination. I'm going to start with the skew block plane because it covers the whole width of the tenon. And then I'm going to touch up with the bed float and we'll get all these fitted into place and we'll be ready to go. Okay. Let's take a look now and see how this fits. Oh boy, there we go. Yeah. Want to see no seam, and obviously, we want the two sides, this side and this side, to be flush to the style. And looking good. I think that's going to be the trick. So, I'm just going to keep working on these till I get them all done. All right, with all the tenons trimmed and fit into the mortises, I've now dry assembled both doors. I have them stacked on top of each other and I've got them clamped up tight because what I need to do now is to measure for the inserts. And I'm measuring for the inserts now because I'm going to order those pre-cut to exact size. Now I've got some material here that I cut and what I did on this one is I simply nibbled away the length until I got it to where it fit into the groove side to side with 1 16th of an inch of play. And that is just, just perfect all the way up and down both doors. And that measurement is 12 and 13 sixteenths. Now, to measure the height of these two panels, an easy way to do that is to take a piece that's a little short and another piece and line them up here in the grooves and push them up tight to both ends and then make a mark. And with that mark made, pull those out, lay them down, make sure your mark stays lined up, and then all you have to do is measure from the end of the one to the end of the other, again making sure that those marks stay lined up just perfect, and that is 33 and a quarter inches. So I'm just going to note that on here, that that's 33 and a quarter, and that'll be the dimension of the top. The bottom one, I'm going to use these two short pieces here. I'm going to put one in the groove there, one in the groove here. I'm going to hold that tight. I'm going to make sure that I'm roughly parallel to the two styles, and I'm going to make a mark there. I'm going to pull that out and do the same thing. I'm going to measure from end to end with those two pieces held in registration where my mark was. And it just slipped on me a little bit. There we go. And that is 22 and 5 sixteenths. Now I'm going to take the 22 and 5 sixteenths and the 33 and a quarter and I'm going to reduce those two dimensions by a sixteenth of an inch. And that'll give me the same wiggle room and space that I have in the side-to-side -side dimension. So I'm going to go get, that, get those uh, panels ordered right now before I forget it while I'm thinking about it. And then we're going to start attaching the hardware. All right, I got the plastic ordered. Now it's time to mark the locations for the hardware. And the first step I'm going to do is to unclamp these doors and I want to turn each door over. Now this is the face 
So I want to turn the door over and mark on the back side where the hardware is going to go. And roughly, the hardware will be going right along in here. And we just want to make sure that uh, we don't mess up and put that in the wrong place. So let's set this one aside. And we'll do the same thing over here on this door. All right. And then what we'll do is we'll start actually marking the locations for the 35 millimeter holes for the hardware. So let's go through how we're going to mark that out. Okay, now with the chalk roughly marking out where I want to put the uh, hardware, I'm going to put a clamp back on this. And the reason for putting a clamp on this is merely to draw the mortise and tenon together so that I get the dimensions correct. If you recall from our first video, we determined that to get the flat on this hardware even with the edge of the rail, we need it to be just a smidge over a half an inch. So I've got my combination square set at a half an inch and the width of the pencil lid will make that just right. What we need to determine though is how far in from the edges to put this. If we put them too narrow, too close together, the door might rock. If I put it out here, there is an extremely rare but off chance we could split the style and if I get it too close here it's going to mess up the joinery. So I've kind of determined that about four inches in is going to be about right. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to come in at four inches and make a mark. And we'll just Put a mark here at four inches. And then what we'll do is we'll use a combination square just to extend. I gotta take my glasses off so I can see up close. We'll just make a mark here to extend that across. Just like that. Then with this combination square set at exactly a half an inch, I'll make a mark that goes across across that mark and where those two lines intersect will be the center of the 35 millimeter hole for mounting this hardware. I'm going to do that on the doors on all the end rails, top and bottom, and then we'll go to the drill press and drill these holes out. All right, I've got my first rail here ready to go, but uh, before I do that, I've got this test piece and I've made a mark the same distance down from the edge, just like on the real rail. And I want to drill a test hole, and the reason I want to drill that test hole is to make sure I've got the depth just right. Now, this particular drill press has a laser crosshair on it, which is, for all intents and purposes, just about good for nothing. But it kind of gets you within a dime-sized circle, uh, maybe a little better than that. But what I like to do is I like to bring the drill bit down to where it's almost in contact with the workpiece and then just visually get the thing lined up perfect. Now, a little bit about the drill bit. <clears throat> the uh, hardware calls for 35 millimeter holes and I've got a 35 millimeter bit but it's tied up in another project right now. This is a one and three eighths inch bit and it's just one of those uh, little funny things that 1 and 3 8 inch and 35 millimeter are essentially interchangeable. They're so close that uh, it makes little difference in the final analysis of things. Just want to make sure I got this just right. Okay, yep, we're good there. So, sorry my hand is in the way, but I'm left-handed. There's not much I can do about it. Alright, 
Now, if you'll recall from the first video, we kind of determined that the correct depth for this was just a smidge less than a half an inch. And I've got my uh, combination square still set at exactly a half an inch from marking these out. And it looks like we're probably about a 32nd inch short of a half, which should be just about right. I can use this good ruler here. Yep, exactly 1 32nd of an inch less than a half. So that depth is just right. So let's clear the workspace. Always a good idea from a safety standpoint. And let's make our first hardware hole. I'm going to get this lined up just as perfectly as I can. That looks pretty good. I'm going to hold that real tight. I'm actually going to hold it with this hand this time. I feel with these Forstner bits, if you just take a little bit, back off, take a little bit, back off, you can actually uh, keep the bit cooler and get a little cleaner cut. My drill press is, obviously, as you can tell, it's not the greatest. Someday I'll do better. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, you may wonder why I'm cutting the uh, holes for the hardware before assembling the door, and it's really simple. The reason is, is because once the door is assembled, I would be having to hang the door off the back of the drill press, and it would just be a lot more difficult doing the positioning. So this is easier, do it beforehand, and uh, hope for the best. One down, three to go. Well, that's about all we can do for right now because I'm waiting on those pre-cut plastic panels to come in. But in the next video, we'll install those plastic panels, we'll glue up the doors, we'll install the hardware, put some finish on, and then go install them in that linen cubby and we'll see how they work. I look forward to seeing you in that next video and thank you so much for watching this one.